Try this again. Hello, horror fans. So I have a growing collection of horror masks, which I want to show you. You are all weirdos. Ugh. But before I do, I think it's important to understand the difference between silicone masks and latex masks. Why would you buy one over the other? Which one could you use for your low budget filmmaking project? It's probably pretty obvious just by taking a quick look, but stick around and we'll talk about it. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe if you like old school horror and watch until the very end and I'll tell you how you can be a part of the channel. So, you want to make a horror film, and you want a hideous monster in your movie, and you're not quite sure how to pull it off on a small budget. Most people would go to the local Halloween store or shop online for horror costumes, and you'd probably find a lot of latex masks that were reasonably priced, but look completely unrealistic. The only way to use a latex mask in a film, in my humble opinion, is if you're shooting a slasher film, where the antagonist is a human that is supposed to be wearing a mask then it doesn't matter how bad the mask is. It can still work. Now, if you want a more realistic monster, then you need to specifically look for a silicone mask, which is gonna be a bit more expensive, but with a tiny bit of lighting, it's about as close as you can get to Hollywood-style practical effects on a DIY budget. In a typical big budget horror production, you'd hire a special effects team to apply prosthetics to your actors, which takes an unbelievably skilled team and sometimes hours in a makeup chair for the actors. Us low budget filmmakers don't have that kind of time or money. So the next best option is essentially a pre-painted, full bust silicone prosthetic. Silicone is really close to actual skin. It's stretchy and kind of semi-translucent, and it's amazing how much it feels like real flesh. There's a reason why plastic surgeons use silicone for fake breasts. And since it's so stretchy, it can be made slightly smaller than the average head and then stretched around to fit over your features. So it's more like a wetsuit or a second layer of skin rather than a cheap mask that has no movement. And that's the main difference that you should be aware of. A silicone mask is made to fit like a second skin. It won't look big and bulky on your head and it will also move a bit with your actual face movements so your actor can add some life to the performance. A latex mask doesn't stretch or move with your facial movements. And since you can't stretch them onto your head, they need to be made much bigger than the average person's head to allow the wearer to actually put it on. This makes the latex mask This makes the latex mask look big and bulky and unrealistic. There's just no comparison. Silicone looks and moves more realistically. Now, let's talk about the bad part. The price. You can find some pretty high quality latex masks for under $100 but the average silicone mask will run you around 500. And the more detailed masks can be well over a thousand. Now I know a thousand dollars sounds like a ton of money, but keep in mind, even a micro budget film can spend 10 times that on effects. A thousand dollars for me is an acceptable amount of money for a believable, badass movie monster that can be used over and over again. And it's one thing that can add a ton of production value to your low budget horror film. So there you go. The choice is easy. If you want to save money, buy a latex mask. And if you light it correctly or keep it in the shadows, it might be completely fine. But if you want something that looks more realistic and something that you can show to the audience a little bit more, then silicone is your best option. Let me know in the comments which type of mask you prefer. And send me some links to your horror movies, whether you've used silicone or latex. I'd love to see them. And if you want to be a part of the channel and have your voice heard, go to our website and leave us a voicemail. It truly doesn't matter what you say, as long as you think it'd be something that would be fun to add to a video. And please, like, comment, and subscribe. You have no idea how much that helps the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Sorry.